Base family and welcome to Everything Base. So with my new um, studio area, better uh, audio and better capabilities, making, I think, easier videos to watch and listen to, I wanted to go back to some of the earliest videos I did and do them again. And so this might be new to you too, because in the early days of my channel, I, as you might understand, I didn't have a lot of viewers. So some of these um, might have slipped through the cracks and my site has over 300 and some odd videos on it right now. So I figured doing a refresher with better audio and I, I think I'm learning how every day to be better uh, in front of the camera. Uh, I wanted to go back and address one of my favorite exercises for students to do. Now I did it as a series before and I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to give you the concept and discuss how you can create your own series and expand it off the entire fingerboard. So during the intro I was playing the basic foundation of this exercise. So here's, if it's a game, I'm going to give you the rules of the game. So we're going to stick to the D string and the G string and we're going to play the lowest frettable natural notes, that's E, second fret. Then we're going to play in that hand position, you know, three natural notes, E, F, G, or second, third, fifth fret. Now we're going to go to the G string and go A, B, C. So we're playing them as triplets, one and a, two and a, one and a, da, 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 like that. Okay. But that's not where the excess stops. Then we go to the, the next note in the series. So we start on E, so we're gonna go to F. And this time, if we play three natural notes, we have to stretch a bit. So F, G, A. Now I do recommend, this is one of the widest stretches we can have between fingers, is between the index and the middle. So making you go index on the F, slide up a little bit, play the middle finger with, uh, the sorry, the G with your middle finger, pinky. Now what that does is look, the B on the G string on the fourth fret is right under my index finger. So it's, you know, I've seen guys do things where they'll, they'll like go index, and then like ring, and then try to stretch with the pinky and end up kind of boogered up. Here, if you just play the index, shift with your middle, and now you've got a really smooth transition. So in the, those two positions, I've played from this low E up to this high D. The benefits of hypernex studies is multiple. One is a uh, good technique exercise, get your picking cleaner. Uh, another is you're gonna learn your fingerboard. That's why I start with natural notes. If you know where every natural note, no sharps and flats, but you know where all the natural notes are, you really do know where the sharps and flats are. Um, and it really will open up the fingerboard so you don't feel locked in one area. All right, so we're going. Now, as you can imagine, the next one, we're gonna start on this G. Now this is all whole steps. So G, A, B, C, D, E. Now I should point out now, if you haven't noticed, but another little cool way to, that makes this exercise easy to memorize is it's alphabetical. Like when I started on the E, I went E, F, G, the next note in our musical alphabet is A, and that's the note I play on the next ring, A, B, C. When I go F, G, A, B, C, D, see how it's all alphabetical. So that's another way to make sure you're doing it correctly. Are the notes alphabetical? If you happen to go from D and instead of playing E next, you play an F, then something's wrong. Check your fingering, check where you're going. So you end up playing as high as you want on the fingerboard. I always felt that if the frets are there, I should know what they're called. So I just keep going as high as you want to go. Um, but that's just day one. Um, and I jokingly say day one because, you know, with this exercise and depending on how much time you have uh, to practice each day, you might take a week on just what I did there. And and this is what's written, by the way, on the um, sheet you can download uh, on my Patreon page. For my Patreon supporters, for $8 a month, they can download all my written materials. So if you go, I believe this will be called Hyper Next Study Redo. Redo. Looks like Redux. Um, and uh, maybe I'll call it do-over. That seems more me because I'm not a fancy word guy. Um, anyway, if you find the post that matches, you'll find the, the sheet music. You can download it. It's a PDF, so you can, it doesn't matter what operating system you have. It's universal. And you'll see just what I just played, nothing more. But I want to talk about what you can do. So the obviously next evolution is to start and do it between the A and the D strings. Now, again, if you have a seven string, six string, 12 string, whatever, you can choose you know, which pairs to do in what order. 
But by doing, like in this case on a four string, by doing the A string, the D string, it's only half as difficult because we already worked out the notes on the D string. So now we're figuring out, okay, B, C, D, because B is our lowest fretable natural note. Uh, I'm not starting with opens. B, C, D, E, F, G, and just kind of go on finding out where your whole steps and half steps are. Then of course, the net, when, it, when you feel you've got that down, then go to the E string and the A string. Now this has got a big stretch, probably one of the biggest stretches on a standard tuned uh, four string bass because you're going F, G, A, whole steps. And then B, C, D, and going on from there. See how easy, I don't want to say easy because you might you know struggle at first, but it's attainable. And I'm not saying do this for like 30 minutes a day, five minutes. For five minutes, take two neighboring strings, use only natural notes, and work up as high as you can on the bass. Play backwards too. Play from the up, you know, back. It'll feel different. It'll look a little different, but the notes are the same, and it just reinforces the fingerboard notes in your mind. Now, can't stop there. You have a couple choices. We have a fork in the road. You can do one thing, which is add a key signature. So we've been doing everything in the key of C. Maybe we just do it in G. So now we have an F sharp. So we start with our same D and G string. We go D, I'm sorry, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. So every time I find an F, I just sharp it. I move it up a fret. So when I'm up here, I'll go like B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now I'm in the key of G. And you would do that with all the two sets. That's one fork, adding a key. After that, maybe add one flat, do the key of F, two sharps, D, you know, just go through the, uh, the 12 keys doing this man now it's a snowball you're actually getting so much you're getting your technique down you're learning your fingerboard better now you're learning your key signatures better and things like you know sight reading in certain keys becomes easier because you really reinforced it through this practice that's the like let's call it the left fork the left fork is to add keys the right fork is to skip strings and this now the phrase is no longer alphabetical so whereas we were going, you know, E, F, G, A, B, C, let's say we start and we're going to use the A string and the G string. And we start on the lowest fretable natural note, B, C, D, but we go up to A, B, C. Now you really have to know your fingerboard to do this. So it's a good reinforcing factor. Pause for a second. You notice I don't have a metronome or drum machine going. It's not important. Not important at this stage. You can add it later if you really want to work on like your upper tempo playing and make sure you're not getting a whole bunch of buzzes and rattles. But in, I wouldn't touch a metronome for a long time because that's not what it's about. What it's about is learn your fingerboard, learn like learning the notes on the fingerboard, ultimate learning keys, um, developing clean technique. All these don't really need a metronome or, or a drum machine. Uh, now I tell you, and this is even more for five string, six string, seven string players, but on a four string, going from the E string all the way to the G string, that can be a challenge you know, for many reasons. There is one little thing that helps. Like if I'm playing on the E string and I'm gonna skip to the G string, I'm gonna go F, G, A. So the last note I played was an A. Well, that's the first note I'm gonna play on the G string, A, B, C. So if I go A, a G, A, B, I would start on the B. B, C, D, so C, that's pretty easy. So the hypernex study, a simple concept, something that you can actually work into your practice. Um, and if you have, I really encourage a practice journal so you don't forget things or it keeps you from that habit of just playing songs and, and doing stuff you already know how to do. But you know, just dedicate two, two and a half to five minutes, hypernex study, but write down what it'll be. Like D and G string, key of C. Um, then maybe you don't get as good as you want, so the next day, do the same thing. But maybe the third day, you're like, you know, I got that. So now I'm gonna do the A and the D string, key of C, and so on and so forth. Um, but I'm a resource for you guys. You know, in the comments below, uh, did you try it? Did you try it? How long did you try it? How did it work for you? Are you excited about it? Are you frustrated by it? Whatever it might be, there's no wrong answer, but don't just sit there and give up on it. Um, I, th I think you'll look at it and see value in this exercise. So if you can see the value in the exercise and you get frustrated and you feel like throwing it away, don't throw away that value. Just reach out. Just comment or email me directly at dtitus at daletitus.com. One way or the other, we'll get you over that hump and you'll get to, you know, to move up to the next level in your playing and hopefully enjoy your playing better. All right. 
Well, brothers and sisters of the base, I love that you stopped by. Thank you. If you get a chance, could you give this video a like? Um, if you're not subscribed, I, I check some stats at the end of the year and over 60% of the people looking at my videos aren't subscribed. You don't have to. You don't have to subscribe to the YouTube channel, but it sure helps. It helps in the YouTube's eyes. Um, so if you don't, if you don't mind, it's free. Just you know, go right below this video, uh, find um, the subscribe button, and then hit the little bell icon that's right next to it. Sometimes, if you're like watching us on um, a gaming console, there's three dots. You have to hit on that. It brings up a bunch of options. Find subscribe, and then the uh, notification. And um, that'll just let you know every time I upload a video. In my early days, I was uploading like five videos a week. Um, I'm trying to focus on quality and not quantity. I think I made an error there. So you're gonna just get a notification of two to three times a week. Um, and hopefully you're seeing that the quality of the videos are better. All right, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being part of my life. And I will see you at the next video. <laughs>